GCSE Astronomy Topic 10 Observing the Sun. Three videos about the Sun. This is the first one. Now, very important, observing the Sun, even with the naked eye, very, very dangerous. Why? Because our eyes are very, very easily damaged by the waves from the Sun. Uh, how can we observe the sun safely? There's a couple of ways of doing it. One way of doing it is simply projecting an image onto a screen. Using a telescope to project an image onto a screen. Um, I've got this thing called a solar scope, which is specially designed to project an image of the sun. Uh, and we use it in one of the bits of coursework to do sunspots and things. Okay, so projecting an image is the safest way of doing it. Uh, you can get special filters which you can put on your telescope. Uh, there's a thing called a hydrogen alpha filter. And if you use one of these, we can see details in the chromosphere very, very well using a hydrogen alpha filter. Uh, very expensive. I think that one there is about a thousand quids worth. Okay. Now... Uh, another very safe way to observe the sun is to use uh, a, another telescope. In 1995, NASA launched a satellite called SOHO, the Solar Heliospheric Observatory, and its job was to basically look at the sun and take lots and lots of measurements. And if you go on the SOHO website, there are thousands of images of the sun uh, in visible and non-visible wavelengths and they're updated daily and it's all free readily available and I suppose that's the best way of observing the Sun using SOHO the ESA as well not just NASA NASA and the ESA now we can observe the Sun in different wavelengths we can look at it in ultraviolet uh, we can look at it in infrared, we can look at it in uh, x-rays. Why would we want to do that? Well, basically, when you look at different wavelengths, then you're looking at different temperatures. Okay, if you're looking at x-ray images, you're looking at very high temperature stuff. So we can see what's happening at different temperatures. We can see what's happening in different layers of the sun. I mentioned earlier that using hydrogen alpha is very good for looking at the chromosphere. Okay, so there are, there are different wavelengths we can observe the sun in. Now, an important point is that these are non-visible wavelengths here, and that means we can't actually see them. The images that we are looking at now, they are called false color images, and they've been produced by a computer to help us to understand exactly what's going on. Okay, using different wavelengths help us to understand what is happening in different sections and at different temperatures. Now, there are three outer layers and there are three inner layers. In this video, I'm going to talk about the three outer layers, uh, working our way in. Now, on the outside, you've got the corona, which means crown. Uh, it's very, very hot the corona. One would imagine as you moved away from the sun, things would get cooler. But it is very hot, the corona. It's about a million degrees centigrade. Uh, it's only visible to the naked eye during an eclipse. And it's made of very hot ionized gases, charged particles, positive and negatively charged particles streaming away from the sun. And it will become the solar wind. Uh, so the very, very hot corona it's not very dense, it's a very thin atmosphere, very thin, not dense, very hot. We have the chromosphere underneath that, the sphere of color. It's about three to 5,000 kilometers thick. Normally we can't see the chromosphere because the photosphere underneath it is so bright. So it's too dim to see normally, so it's relatively transparent emits lots of hydrogen alpha uh, and as we move away from the sun uh, it gets hotter it goes from about five and a half thousand degrees centigrade up to about twenty thousand degrees centigrade 
Uh, then the surface of the sun, the visible outer shell of the sun, is the photosphere, the sphere of light. It is very bright. Uh, it's about 500 kilometers thick. It's where the light we see from the sun comes from. And the surface temperature of the sun is about 5,500 degrees centigrade. So the photosphere is actually, of these three layers, it's the coolest and it is the densest. Remember, a uh, corona on the outside, and then there's the chromosphere, and then there's the photosphere. Here's uh, some pictures, a uh, picture of the photosphere. These are all NASA pictures, the outer shell of the sun. Here we have uh, the chromosphere viewed through a hydrogen alpha filter, and then the corona, and this photo was taken during a solar eclipse and the edges of the corona fade into the solar wind. Here's a very nice NASA animation, the solar wind. What is the solar wind? It's a constant flow of charged particles from the sun, positive and negative little particles, protons. There's lots of protons in it. Now, closer to the sun, the charged particles are, are trapped by the sun's magnetic field. Uh, and it, they go round in circles, trapped by the magnetic field. As you move away from the sun, the magnetic field gets weaker, and this this bunch of charged particles disperses. It's a bit like spraying water from a hose. It becomes almost like a mist of charged particles moving away from the sun, and that is the solar wind, which, if the Earth didn't have a magnetic field, would give us lots of problems.